Uh, how many know that this week is Halloween night? Oh, yeah. this, this week, yeah. Well, we want to talk about that. And, and I think we need to get ready for it. Boy, that's quiet. Okay. We need to get ready. Well, how does a Christian get ready for Halloween night? Well, there's probably three different ways that I'm going to cover this, this, this morning. So uh, let's get started. Get ready for Halloween night. Let's start here. And again, you know, I'm going to use Scripture. Uh, I, I think God's Word preaches a whole lot better than I do. Okay? And, uh, and, and this is truth, right? And I, again, I encourage you, do research on it. All right? Here we go. 1 Corinthians 8 9. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to them that are weak. Well, how does that relate to what's going on right now? Because, uh, you know, let's go this direction. The question is, is Halloween bad? Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, some are afraid to answer that because if you say yes and some of you say no, we're going to go, mm, well, maybe you can answer a little, uh, get a better idea of what the answer should be. All right. To some, Halloween, <coughs> excuse me, Halloween is bad. Galatians 5, 13 through 15 says this. For brethren, we have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Keep that in mind. Even in Halloween time, by love, we serve one another, us. And I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about church, us, the family. Okay? For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. In other words, one person says, oh, we shouldn't be celebrating Halloween. And some says, well, we should use this as an advantage to do this and this. And it goes back and forth. How can you stand out there and give out candy and, and, and promote this? How can you go to parties that are going on? And we sit there and we fight one another. Well, wait, this scripture says, wait a minute. Don't devour one another. Love one another. Well, how do you justify all these things? I'll show you. I think it'll be enlightening. We should be a power against Satan and not against one another. Amen. Are you justifying Halloween? No. But I'm going to say it's an opportunity we Christians need to take advantage of. All right? Some have been taught that Christians should have nothing to do with Halloween. And some see nothing wrong with it. Am I right? Amen. Romans 14, 21 through 23. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. We've got to keep that in mind. But sometimes that gets taken too far. Has thou faith? And I'm asking you, and this is, a, a, this is something that's very unique toward us as individuals, how we face Halloween. Has thou had faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. He that doubteth is damned if he eats, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is of sin. So however you treat Halloween night, you have to be able to treat it in faith. If you don't have faith to do certain things, don't do it. Do what you have faith in, but don't condemn somebody else that has faith. And, and, and you say, how can this balance out? Uh, uh, give me some time here. I'll show you. Okay? All right. Others may not see anything wrong with Halloween. 
Where does that come from? Well, here's the teaching. This is 1 Corinthians 10 and 23. Everything, everything is permissible. Ooh, well, that goes against a lot of teaching, doesn't it? Yeah, listen, if you're not following God's word and you're listening to teaching that doesn't go with God's word, doesn't blend with God's word, you need to change the way you think. You need to find out what God's word actually says and notice that there is a blend, right? It has to blend together. Everything is possible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. There's the key. Follow what I'm saying? Not yet. Okay, we'll keep going here. You see, what this means is that God has given us liberty. But don't use that liberty in a bad way. Because God's not stupid. He knows what you're doing. He knows what your, uh, what your intent is, what your heart is. What is our heart? Get people as close to God as we can. Take every advantage that, we, uh, that God gives us to make a difference in someone else's life. Okay? Still quiet. Yes, keep going here. Matthew 11, 18 through 19. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous, a wine dauber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified by its children. So here's the thing. If, if, if the world looks at John the Baptist and says he's bad, and looks at Satan, I mean Christ and says he's bad, how are they going to look at us? And why is it that we look at each other different? You follow what I'm saying? Just because someone's doing uh, something a way that you wouldn't do it, that isn't wrong. you got to remember, guys, we are not the judge and the jury. God is. I have to answer to him. So do you. But understand that he's looking at the intent of your heart. All right? Does that mean that I can do anything? <laughs> That's not what I said. Because God is looking at the intent of your heart. What is the justification of what you're doing? All right? Witches and Satanists and some Christians see Halloween as a religious event. Would you agree with that? Okay, I need you thinking here. I got some of you going this way, all right? Some Christians see Halloween as an evening before All Saints, before, uh, which is an All Saints celebration, uh, which it was an old 7th century celebration. That's where it originally came from, all right? The uh, Encyclopedia of Britannica says, did I say that right? <laughs> Britannica, that's it, says this about Halloween. Halloween has been around for more than a thousand years. Originally a religious observance. Catch it? Originally. Even, even it acknowledges that. It became increasingly secular over the centuries until its religious trappings all but disappeared. Today... Halloween is considered a holiday for dress-up and fun, especially for children. In much of Europe and most of North America, observance of Halloween is larger, 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 biggest part. <laughs> biggest part, a non-religious event. Okay. You can treat Halloween, and you need to treat Halloween as your conscience dictates. Keep in mind, God uses each one of us to do different things. But we don't need to devour one another. We need to pray for one another. 
You understand what I'm saying? Romans 14, 22, 23. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Okay? Blessed is the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But the man who has doubt is condemned if he eats because, he is, uh, because his eating is not of faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. In other words, God has called each one of us to handle, I think, Halloween differently. But because we do it different doesn't mean the person that's doing it different from you is wrong. Because God is using each one of us to attack Satan the same way. We've got to stay unified in this. We've already established that it was originally a Christian thing. It's been hijacked. It's time to hijack it back. Amen. Okay? Some Christians see Halloween as a night of evil celebration. To those Christians, it is a night to bind Satan in power. I agree with that. Amen. I totally agree Amen. with that. And I think as Christians, we should. But some of you have been called to do just that. Focus on that. Some of us haven't. How can that be? You see, some Christians see this as a night to celebrate All Saints Night. Churches have trunk or treat and enjoyed the fun time with their kids and their families. And their, fa their, their kids, they dress up as Bible characters. This is a great time. To dress up as King David, as Moses, as Gideon, you know, and, and celebrate. It's a time for them to do. I mean, let's take advantage of it. Let's take it back. It's a celebrate of all saints, the saints that have gone before. Let's do that. Let's teach our kids right. But just don't condemn people or churches because they're having a trunk or creep. But you need to pray that evil doesn't interfere with what's going on because their intent is this, is to get people closer to God, to have a time that the kids, that the, not only just Christians can be exposed to the good and the love of God, but even secular kids that come up. Well, this is interesting because a lot of times tracts are being passed out. People are talking about the Lord. You follow what I'm saying? Who are you or me to condemn what someone else is doing? Christ even said that to his disciples. They, they said they're preaching something different. And Christ said, if they're not against us, they're for us. Amen. Understand the intent of the heart. Now, if your intent is to celebrate Satan, boy, you're, you're definitely wrong. You got no business in it. But not ours. Okay. Pastor, it sounds like you're justifying one way or another. Yes, I am. Okay. As for me, this, and I'm talking about Jerry, this is a holiday for dress up and fun, especially for kids. It is a chance to get to know neighbors and neighborhood kids and demonstrate good old Christian love. Make Christians, make Christianity, make this night a time that you impact your neighborhood. I'll give you an example. My next door neighbor, he loves Halloween. Some of you have seen, I mean, he's got this big old skeleton out there. He's got the graveyard, it's half property that's next to, and everything. And this guy, he just has a good time. All right, and he had a party. Kathy, was it Friday night? And he, he said, Jerry, you need to come over. You need to come over and enjoy it. I said, I'm not going to come and dress up. He says, you don't have to. I just want you to meet my, my friends and stuff that's going on. Okay, so I trips over there, 
And I, I'm telling you what, this, whee, this guy knows how to do it. <laughs> He's got a, a nine or ten foot wolf man standing there with the eyes. and I mean, this is, <laughs> this is creepy. And go in, and, 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 and I'm meeting his friends and um, eating some really fine food and stuff like that. Yeah, they had everything that's in there, you know. But here's what really happened. Once they found out I'm a minister, this one guy in particular, we got to talking about end times. We got to talking about faith. We got to talking about needing to be in church and questioning back and forth. Deep, deep discussions. And I'm going, God, thank you for the opportunity. Because how many Christians would have said, I ain't going there. Well, wait a minute. I'm a child of God. What can evil do to me? I am not afraid of walking into the pits of hell and grabbing somebody and walking them back out. You understand what I'm saying? That was an opportunity that I could have missed. Got to talking to him. And, and, and I, I need to go to church. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Guys, take the advantage and make a difference because we're Christians. We shouldn't be running away from it. Let's walk into the pits of hell and do what it takes. Amen. But don't condemn those of us that are doing that and said, pray for us. Pray for the protection. Bind the demon spirits that they have no influence of what's going on. We have that authority. That's your job. My job that night was to do something else. You see what I'm saying here, guys? Let's don't fight and backbite one another, devour one another. That's Satan's way. But by love. What is the point? Why do I not worry about Halloween? Well, uh, wait a minute. Let me, let me back up. John, uh, John 3, uh, John 1 and 11. Dear friends, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Now, Romans 12 and 21 says not this. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. What was I doing? That. What are you doing praying for me? You're doing that. You understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to make sure I didn't skip over here. But we are not to imitate what is evil, but that which is good. Anyone who does that is good. So that's what we're doing. And well, if, if you're going to have your kids dress up, imitate good. Amen. There you go. It's not good to have them dress up as a witch. I wouldn't. No. For crying out loud. Don't do that. All right. Why do I not worry about Halloween? Because the devil and his religions were defeated on Calvary. Colossians 2.15 And having disarmed the powers and the authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. I think that's what we ought to be doing. Wouldn't you agree? He's been disarmed. He doesn't have the authority against you and me. The church, the gates of hell cannot withstand us. Let's take advantage of it. Let's don't sit back and hide. Let's go on the offense and reach souls. Amen. We are... Supposed to outwit evil. Matthew 10, 16. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Outwit them. 
Isn't that what I just did? Oh, I. Isn't that what we should be doing? Outwitting them? Especially with all that God has given us. With all this in mind, let's discuss the power we have over evil. Okay? 1 John 4.4 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Amen. I don't care what the world is doing as far as Satan when it comes on Halloween night, because greater is he that's in me. And I'm going to take what's in me right into the pit of hell if I have to. Why? Not the for my own glory or for my own thing or for my rebellion. No, I want to see that person that's in there see the truth. I want to be the church walking into Satan's backyard. You, is that making sense? But you better have your heart right. You better be understanding what our role is on Halloween night. You go to my house. This Halloween night. Right now, you can go, right now, there's a banner. And I'm right next door to the neighbor, right? Now, now I'm also going to say this. He enjoyed me being there. His people enjoyed me being there. I'm a minister. And they enjoyed the conversation we had. That wasn't in there telling them they're going to hell because they're whatever. There was a relationship. And he was proud for me to be at his Halloween party. And I'm a minister. And I upheld that and showed love and understanding. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. Don't let Satan... Hopefully that, that makes enough sense to you right now. Guess what? I think next, next year he's going to say, Would you come over? My people enjoyed you. Boy, you guys are quiet. It's going to take a while for us to get in the right frame of mind. We need to be in the right frame of mind. Listen, we're running out of time. Wise as serpents. Cunning as serpents. That's what we should be, right? Only in the liberty that God has given us. And don't use that as an excuse. But also keep in mind, you don't want to be a stumbling block. Not only to Christians, but to other people. But you understand what I'm saying? There's a balance here. There's a blending here. But the point is to see souls saved. And that's what it's all about. Take advantage of the opportunity God has given you. All right? Okay. Now, so here we go. We've overcome them. Greater is he that's in us. Jesus has given us authority and liberty over all the power of the enemy. All of it, including Halloween night. Luke 10 18 through 19. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I'm going to walk into the pits of hell hell and do whatever destruction I want to. Amen. Satan, hang it in your ear. What can you do to hurt me? You can't. Do you agree with that? Amen. Okay. All right. Here are some things that we should know and practice, not only at Halloween, but all year long. Isaiah 8 and 19. Someone may say to you, let us ask the mediums and those who consult the spirit of the dead with their whisperings and their mutterings. They will tell us what to do. And, that what, and, and, and if you're a Christian and you're going to seances and stuff like that, dude, better not. That's entirely different. Don't, don't do that. Some say we should. No, you shouldn't. But shouldn't people ask God for guidance? Shouldn't the living seek guidance 
Uh, should the living seek guidance from the dead? No. You see, there are limits. You won't find me with a Ouija board anywhere as close. Amen. Am I going to condemn it? I'm just going to point out what it is. You're talking to the devil. Do you realize that? You know, well, that's your opinion. Well, I just told the truth, didn't I? Do I need to elaborate on it anymore? I just told the truth. And then, love you, brother. Love you, sister. But as a Christian, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not condemning that you do that. Although I just pointed out where it's okay. You see, we got to be careful here. But you hold a standard up. You make the standard. But you're not the judge of the jury. Give God a chance to move in their hearts. Give God a chance to talk to them and reason with them overnight in their sleep or whatever it may be. Why isn't in this instant society we demand an answer right now? Well, God didn't do that with you. It took six months before his spirit finally got through this thick head of mine. And if it took six months, and I'm hard-headed, how long would it take the people I'm talking to now. Don't do God's business. You do what God tells you to do. Let him do the convicting. Right? But we're preachers. We preach truth. We're the ones that have to show them the light. But not in a condemning way. Just show them the truth. And let God convict their hearts. It's quiet in here. At least give me a this. There you go. Very good. We are not ignorant. And we are not to ignore evil. But we are to deal with it. So much the time we ignore it. No, deal with it. You're a Christian. You've got the power. Use it. 1 Peter 5, 9 through 8. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy... The devil prowls around like a roaring lion, a lion, lightning, like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. I know he is, right? But how's he going to devour me if God doesn't give him the okay? And God's not going to give him the okay. All right? Why should I be afraid of what the devil can do? He can roar all night long. I remember an old minister one time woke up in the middle of the night, saw the devil at the foot of his bed. I mean, and this fire and everything. And he said, oh, it's just you. And went back to sleep. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Who are you against me? I'm a child of God. God is the one backing me. You see all these angels standing behind me? They're waiting for God to say, get them. All right? Amen. I'm not afraid. I just want to be used. And I don't want to limit God because of my stupid way of thinking. I'll never go to a Halloween party. Well, you're going to miss some opportunities. You see what I'm saying? Well, I can't do that in faith. Then don't go. You see what I'm saying? I'm not condemning you if you can't go. But pray for those that have been sent. Amen. You don't find me up here singing as we heard Stacy and different ones in here sing. Why? Not my calling. But I'm praying for them. Right? But if God has called me to go and do certain things, I'm going to do it. Pray for me. Amen? Amen. I, I'm hoping to get a little more amens here, but I'm, I'm going to say, God, I'm going to give them some time to think it through. Let the Holy Spirit work through this. Well, Pastor, you're going against what we've been taught all our lives. Me too. But it's time to get serious and start doing some damage in the kingdom of evil. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. Self-control over your flesh. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. 
And this is what we look out for. We've got to make sure it's not in us. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, em emulations, uh, wrath, uh, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, as such li like of, of which I have told you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You do those things? Amen. No. But those that do, does this give us the right to go up and condemn them? No. All I have to do is say, guys, do you see this? This is what God says. But God loved you so much that he died on the cross so that you can get closer to him. Where you don't have to be controlled by this stuff. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it took a while for me, and I was telling for God to really work with me. But I want to encourage you. Get close to God. Because he wants to get close to you. You, you, you feel his spirit working in your life. Listen to it. Don't so much listen to me, just listen to him. You see where we're going with this? God is the one that wants to use you. Can God trust you with his word? Can God trust you to say the things that his spirit wants you to say? Can God trust you to be loving? Not forgiving. Well, but yeah, that's a different thing. But yeah, forgiving. But yeah, uh, let's don't go there. We'll be here all night, all, all day long. But you understand what I'm saying, guys? It's about seeing souls saved. It's not about condemning souls. They're already condemned. You and I were. Aren't you glad that people loved us enough to pray for us, to talk to us, to tell us about the love of God? But did they save us? No, it was God's spirit working inside of us. Let God do his thing. You do yours. Okay, I got some more of these, you know. I'm telling you what, some of the biggest blessings that you'll ever run into it's when someone comes to you maybe a year from now and says, thank God I talked to you that night. Thank God that you told me the truth. I didn't buy it at the time. But the more I got to thinking about it, I'm now in church because of you. And of course you would say it's not because of me. I would just leave, and they, they could hear less. But I'm telling you, there's a feeling that, I mean, there's a, there's a joy that over the world can't compare to the joy that God gives you, the rewards that God gives you. Amen. I'm telling you, give God a chance to reward you for doing the things that He's wanting you to do because He wants to. Amen. Don't be miserable. I'm not. Oh, well, I've had a rough week. Fought depression, fought this, fought all this other stuff. I've been fighting being fatigued. But I'm still fighting. And you know what? God gives you strength. And if I didn't have to go through what I'm going through, I wouldn't need the strength. But I need the strength. And when I find his strength, I find faith. And when I find faith, I get more strength. And his spirit starts moving worth in me to do things against what's going in and attacking against me. You see what I'm saying? Guys, God is great. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I wouldn't trade this life for nothing, especially in this last time. This is fun. Well, don't you know what may happen next week in the elections and all that? Well, yeah, I'm concerned. I'm praying about it. Amen. I'm praying about it. But I'm trusting him. Amen. I'm trusting him. Amen. Bless him. Let us bless him. Don't, 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 well, okay. Rabbit trail, right? I love it. I love it. I really do. Okay. All right. I want you to know that God's going to help you. This is 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. If you got that promise, let's do what we need to do on Halloween night. Amen? If it's to pray, pray. If it's to talk, talk. If it's to avoid, avoid. If it's to encourage your kids to be Christ-like and, and stuff like that, then do that. 
But let's take Halloween back. Amen. Let's turn it. Satan turned it against us. Let's turn it against him. Let's make this a time of Christian celebration. All right? Now, we should know this about evil. This is 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen through 15. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Did you know that? I mean, he's the master of deception. Well, look at the world right now. They're deceived. I got neighbors up and down the street right now. So deceived. Uh, it doesn't make sense. But anyway, no wonder Satan himself is a masquerade of an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as a servant of righteousness. Therein will be what their actions deserve. But I'm asking you this. What about our actions? What do our actions deserve? God wants to reward his kids. If you'll notice that over and over and over again. Isn't that where joy comes from? When you're in competition, whether it's a board game or actual physical competition, whatever, when you win, you just don't go, oh, man, I won. No, it's, ow, hang it in your ear. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. There's a joy to it. Right. We Christians are overcomers. This is, this is, but if you're not overcoming, no wonder you're walking around. God, listen, let God bless you. He wants to bless you by doing right. We overcome the world. Let's do it. Let's have fun. What better time to do it than this time, this age, right now, in, in these situations? I'm telling you what, guys, you're missing a good time. If you're living, uh, you, you follow what I'm saying, I'm, I'm hoping, right? All right. There he ends it. Okay. We should know this about Satan. He cannot do anything to a Christian without God's permission. Period. Well, why would God give him permission? So that you can grow. So that you can understand. So that you will understand what it means to, to depend upon his strength. Upon his wisdom. That he can do and do miracles in your life. So other people can see that you're going through some same troubles that they're going through. But yet you're still going through it with a smile on your face. And they'll turn around and say, how come is it every time when something bad happens to you, you end up coming out smelling like a rose? What is different about that? Well, if you never went through troubles, if you never went through trials, they would never see it. It's about seeing people getting close to God. Amen. Let God use you and realize who you are. Amen. And what we're, we will rest when we get home. But right now is the time to fight. Amen. Fight, fight, fight. Amen. I shouldn't have done that. Do you didn't understand what I'm saying? It's time to fight. There's where the joy is. There's where the victory is. Amen. What do you mean? Satan can't do anything to a Christian without God's permission. You guys know this. This is Job 1, 8 through 12. I'll read it to you. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? You can put your name there if you want to. There is no one like on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And the Satan turned around and he said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, You don't do anything against him. Have you not put a hedge around about him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the works of his hands so that his flocks and his herds are spread throughout the land. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely cuss you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well. You see, Satan couldn't do this without God's okay. Very well then, everything he has is in your hands. But on the man himself do not lay a finger... Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. What? So what was the advantage? 
Here's the advantage. 3,000 years later, across the ocean, in the middle of a continent, in Norman, Oklahoma, a preacher is talking to his congregation about the faith of Job. Aren't you glad that God says, you know what? Go ahead. You're going to regret this, Satan, to touch him. But I'm going to put limitations on you. You know, you and I may be going through those limitations so that God can do a bigger purpose to really make a difference in somebody else's life. If that's the case, come on, Lord. And I like what Job said. Though he slay me, I will not turn against him. Wow. And what was the end result? You guys know. He had seven times more than what he had when it was over with. Amen? Plus, we get to talk about Job. What an example. Okay. Now, he can't kill a Christian without God's permission. All right? Um, again, this is Job 3 and 6. Understand this, guys. God owns, he knows what time you're going home. Whether you're saved or not. That's in his hands. Not the devil's, not yours, not the next door neighbor or the guy that's got a pistol aimed at your head. Isn't there a call? This is God's call. And get in mind this. It's a blessed thing when God's people come home. Heaven rejoices. Right? Is that true? Yes. I trust God. I believe him. Well, I haven't got there yet. Get there. Allow things happening in your life and watch God do the miracles. You'll find that that's where faith grows. It grows in the heart. It grows in the valley. It can also grow on the mountaintop. But unfortunately, we don't do anything unless things get bad enough. That's a fact. I mean, we're watching that in the world right now. Are things bad enough in the United States? In some cases, I, I don't think so. To some of us, yeah, it's bad enough. We're going to do something about it. But, yeah, okay, another sermon. Uh, rabbit trail. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. He can't kill a Christian without God's permission. Again, let's go back to Job, all right? Uh, um, this is Job 3, uh, uh, 2, 3 through 6. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? This is the second time. There is no one on the earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still remaineth. He, and he still maintains his integrity. Though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. He's still following. That's the kind of person I want to be. How about you? I just don't want to go through what he's going through, but if that is all right, all right. You know, the Bible does say he'll never put more on you than what you can stand. He knew that was true about Job, right? He also knows that about you. If you're going through it, God knows you can withstand it with his help. Okay, all right. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. But stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely cuss you to the face, to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then. He is in your hands, but you must spare his life. Won't you take his life? You got it? Has God got control? Amen. Come on, guys. Does God have control in your life, everyone's life? Yeah, even Satan. No. So, get ready for Halloween night. Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the whales of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having, all, uh, having done all to stand. That's pretty plain. Have you got God's power in your life? 
Is his spirit inside of you? Are you afraid of what the devil can do? You shouldn't be. Okay. So, for me, Halloween is an opportunity to hurt Satan's kingdom. And I'm going to hurt it. I'm going to hurt it really bad. Because when the kids come out there and I hand them some candy and they see my sign that says, This Halloween seat, God's spirit, and their parents say, Man, I like that. And we get to discussing. And now these kids know that here's a Christian that's here. And for the rest of whatever their lives, when they're in the neighborhood, they see my house as a Christian house, a place of safety, a place that they can talk to. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to give up that opportunity. And I'm asking you that don't have that opportunity, who want to pray against Satan, do that. Do that, but don't condemn the others that if God has called them to do something else. Follow me? Hallelujah, amen, something here, guys. I'm hoping I'm getting through. You got it? All right. So is it wrong for us to turn the light off? and ever? No, it's not wrong. Is it wrong for you to stand out there and tell people about Jesus Christ when they come by? No, that's not wrong either. But we don't need to be devouring and biting each other. We need to be praying with each other, with each other and realize that the goal is to see people getting close to God. Lord, use me. I will. And with your help and with your prayers of protection and everything, I and different ones like us who God has called in to do this will walk into the gates of hell and pull as many people out as we can. Amen. I need you, you need me. Amen? Amen? All right. Now, Halloween is an opportunity to hurt Satan's kingdom. If you can, in faith and a clear conscience, join me Halloween night. Show the friendly spirit that overcomes the evil spirit. If you can't, use the authority God has given you to tread on serpents and devils. Is that easy? Luke 10, 17. I want to end with this. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us unto us through thy name. Catch what God said, what Jesus said. And he said to them, I beheld Satan falling, uh, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from, a uh, fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of, in, of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding, you got to get the rest of it, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the, uh, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. That's the point. Your name is written in heaven. I'm not rejoicing over all this other. I mean, he's given it to me, but I'm going to use it, right? The point is this. Let's make God proud. Amen. Make him proud. Make him proud. He was proud of Job. I want him to be proud of me. I want him to be proud of you. All of us working together can make this, this we can make this a miserable night for the devil. Really, I need to replay, repeat that. We can make this a miserable night for the devil and for his evil spirits. Sounds like a good idea to me. Support the efforts of the churches this Halloween night. Support them. Stomp on the devil or overcome the devil with good. Either way, have fun this Halloween night. Amen. Is this good? I'm hoping it is. Satan, you're in trouble. You in big trouble.
and we're going to make sure you have a miserable night. Amen. Those of you who are on Facebook, have a great Halloween. Have a great night. Let's just get closer to God, and let's encourage others to get close to God. Let's don't ignore the opportunity God has given us. But let's see it in God's eyes, in God's sight. Amen. Let's support one another. Let's pray for one another. Let's just make this a miserable night for him. God bless you on the Internet.